श्री सच्चिदानंद सदगुरु साईनाथ महाराज की जय सदगुरु भरद्वाज महाराज की जय श्री गुरु चरित्र चैप्टर 21 व्हेन नामधारक एक्सप्रेस्ड फर्दर इंटरेस्ट इन लिसनिंग टू द स्टोरीज ऑफ श्री नृसिंह सरस्वती सिद्धा कंटिन्यूड देयर वाज अ डिसिपल ऑफ श्री गुरु बाय नेम तंतुका ही यूज्ड टू अटेंड टू हिज वर्ल्डली ड्यूटीज फॉर थ्री थ्री क्वार्टर्स of the day and devote only the remaining part of it for the service of the master once all his kinsfolk invited him to join them on a pilgrimage to holy sri sailam in andhra pradesh tantuka replied the mat of sri guru he is as holy to me as sri sailam and sri guru is my lord malikarjuna His kinsfolk considered him a fool and went away on their pilgrimage. Some days later came the holy festival of Shivaratri. On seeing him, Sri Guru said, "Why did you not join your people on their holy trip?" Tantuka replied, "There is no holier service than the service of thy feet. Not knowing this, these people rush about to two places of pilgrimage in delusion the lord said my son it is not so even though the supreme lord is all pervading his presence can more keenly be realized in the holy places in those places which were sanctified by the austerities of great saints down the ages the lord responds to the devotees call more readily therefore people can achieve the goal of their devotions much more easily in such places having having perfected and liberated themselves the mahatmas help others to do so by the power of their austerities indeed the great sages and their divine powers were created only for the uplift of all creatures even the dust of the places where they move about is made so holy that it can bless people in their spiritual endeavors that is why people go to such places on pilgrimage now i shall show you such holy places then sri guru made tantuka wear his own sandals and commanded him to close his eyes for a while and open them again The latter found that both of them had reached Sri Salam in a moment through the yogic power of the master. Then the latter told Tantuka to witness the holy place and duly perform all the rituals of the pilgrimage like shaving, bathing and taking darshan of Lord Malikarjuna, the presiding deity of the place. There his kinsfolk met him and said, in astonishment when we invited you you refused to join us how can could you be here by the time we reached here tantika told them that it was rendered possible by the grace of sri guru but they could not believe it when he took darshan of lord malikarjuna in the temple he saw the form of sri guru in the shivalinga there after finishing his ritual worship he returned to his master and said sir even in this holy place you alone are present people do not recognize you for what you are and in their ignorance such for the lord here and here and there you are indeed all pervading sri guru replied indeed the self is all pervading and yet it manifests itself differently in different places This holy place is capable of bestowing liberation on the devout. I shall recount a famous anecdote to illustrate the point in the land of Kiratas. In the land of Kiratas there was a king named Vimarsana. He was kind hearted and devoted to the gods and pious brahmins. even though he earned the merit of worshiping lord shiva 
in his previous birth owing to certain misdeeds of that life he used to eat and drink all those things which were prohibited by shastras and he led a profligate life once his wife asked him lord with all your vices how could you come to have such a deep faith in lord shiva the king replied in one of my previous lives i was a dog in the city of pampa on a holy shivaratri i happened to go to the temple of shiva i devotees the devotees who assembled there beat me severely and i dies then and there by the merit of dying in the presence of the lord shiva on such a holy day i am now born in a royal family all the best traits which you see now in me derive from my previous existence as a dog those subtle tendencies in me cannot but manifest themselves then he queen then the queen persuaded him to enlighten her about her own previous life he said that in that life she was a female pigeon at holy sri salem as a result of your life long stay at such a holy place you have now become my queen then she asked him about the future lives of them both he said in the next life i shall be born as the prince of the kingdom of sindhu and you shall be born in the royal family of land of sanjia and we shall be united in marriage in the life after that i shall be the king of saurashtra and you born as the princess of kalinga shall be my queen in the third hence i shall be the king of gandhara and you as the princess of magadha will be my queen in the fourth birth i shall be the king of avanti and you as the princess of dasarna will be my queen in the fifth life i shall be a king named ananta and you as the daughter of king yayati will be my wife in the sixth life i shall be the very hands of king of pandya and you as the as the virtuous princess of vidarbha will marry me in that life we will enjoy kingly pleasures and perform many great religious sacrifices in the seventh bed we will attain liberation by the grace of sage agastya in this manner even animals and birds will attain to higher states of existence indeed it is human beings who through the force of their earlier evil actions will be born subsequently as various other creatures in nature but the gods will ever take care that they do not fall away from their heavenly states then sri guru brought back tantuka to the sangama near gangapur in as mysterious a way and ordered him to retire to his village a few people of the village had also joined him and on the way asked him why he got his head shaved he told them how sri guru took him mysteriously to sri salem and how he got his head shaved there as per the custom of the place they could not believe his words and said till a few hours ago this man was here he is weaving fairy tales at night all the men came to the sangama observed fast and kept a vigil till dawn chanting the name of lord shiva a fortnight later all the kings folk of tantuka returned from sri salem they wondered they, when they learned that he was back at gangapur far ahead of them they realized that it was all the grace of sri guru the people at gangapur also confirmed tantuka's words through incessant service of his master he eventually freed himself from the shackles of his previous karma 
and attained the highest bliss that transcends the pairs of opposites like joy and sorrow who can ever know how many are the souls that were thus liberated through the devotion to the guru in the same manner there were two poets who attained liberation by celebrating the divine glory of sri narasimha saraswati in verse in fight are the divine acts of the lord and no one can ever know them in full the vedas themselves have betrayed their elaborate inability to comprehend his glory namadarka longed to know the story of the two poets in full so siddha gladly resumed his account a brahman by name nandi sharma was afflicted by leprosy in order to free himself of it he practiced several austerity severe austerity or tapas at tulajapur one day goddess bhavani appeared to him in a vision and directed him to worship goddess chandala chandaleshwari accordingly he went there and practiced austerities for seven long months one day the goddess appeared in a vision and directed him to serve the sanyasi at gangapur to realize his object the brahmin was shocked and even lost his patience and remonstrated her are you a goddess not ashamed to tell me to serve a common mortal what happened to your divine power if you could not help me yourself why have you not told me so even earlier and spared me all my long strenuous efforts without a word a goddess disappeared the man again persuaded his austerity to win her favor but it was in vain at last finding no other way one day he went to gangapur to see the sanyasi as per the direction of the goddess strongly strangely enough in spite of his repeated inquiries no one at gangapur directed him to the lord at last an old man told him that the master was due to arrive there for the holy shivaratri meanwhile some of the local devotees of sri guru had conveyed to him the news of the arrival of nandi sharma immediately sri guru summoned nandi sharma and said why have you come here to serve a common mortal leaving aside the many deities the many deities for no mere mortal can ever uh, ever free you of your fell disease nandi sharma immediately realized the stuff of which the sanyasi was made that he was indeed the supreme lord himself he prayed lord pardon me my error i am dull of intellect and is septic a fallen sinner you on the other hand are the ocean of mercy and filial love for your devotees i seek your refuge i have none else to help me soon after my marriage i was afflicted by this foul disease even my parents and wife have left me even the gods have refused to respond to my prayers i find it better to end my life than to prolong such a tale of misery o thou supreme myself o thou supreme self if you do look on me with a cold eye i shall be compelled to take my life the merciful lord was moved at his plight and said do not fear my son this disease is a result of your previous sins which can be washed off only through patient endurance indeed you have gained this faith in me now only because the results of your evil karma have worked out now you take a dip in the holy sangama then the guru turned to another disciple by name somanada and said 
take this Nand Sharma to the river for a bath, guide him in worshipping the nearby peepal tree and then bring him back. Accordingly, Nand Sharma finished the bath and worship at the Sangama, returned to the master and prostrated to his feet. The Lord lovingly raised him up and said, My son Nand Sharma, stand up and look at your own body. Nandi Sharma was amazed to find that all his body was clean except for a small ugly patch on the leg. He turned to Sri Guru and asked him why the patch was left behind. Sri Guru said, You had a trace of doubt in your heart and hence this patch has remained. Nandi Sharma bowed to him and prayed earnestly, O oh, Supreme Lord, is it possible that a man should drink ambrosia and yet simply because he mistakes it to be water? What he could be subjected to death? Does the fire cease to burn simply because a man touches it in ignorance? Sri Indrisumma Saraswati said, Everything happens according to one's faith. If a man loses his sight, through his own fault, can he see the sun? At first, you had the doubt that nothing can be gained through the service of a guru. This patch is a consequence of it. Still, there is a means of getting rid of it. You sing a hymn of praise which on the basis of the teachings of the Vedas express your realization that I am not a mere mortal. Thereby, you shall realize your object. The Brahmin felt helpless and trembled with apprehension and said, O Lord Supreme, you are the indweller of the hearts of all creatures. What need I to tell you? How can I compose a hymn when I am totally illiterate? Tell me something else which is in my power to do. Sri Guru said, My son, just as the tusk which has grown out of an elephant's mouth cannot be withdrawn to its root, the words I have uttered cannot be taken back. You must do as you are told. At once, great learning and poetic ability welled up in Nandi Sharma's heart. Love and reverence for the Guru had clothed his heart and he commenced singing his hum in a trembling voice. O Supreme Lord, though art that reality, you are the doer, sustainer, the eternal witness, the true self of all. You have projected all creatures from the three modes of prakriti or nature and thereby projected the whole universe of things both the moving and unmoving. Among all the sentient creatures, only a human being is fit for enlightenment. Even he is deluded by the power of Maya, he is enmeshed in the web of motives and in consequence of his sins, wonders about amidst and horrors of hell and he cannot free himself even in the course of the vast cosmic epochs even if his soul passes to higher realms of existence by the force of his virtuous deeds as soon as their effects are worked out he fails back to the realm of the moon there he feeds himself of food and takes the form of sperm at the time of conju conjugal union of his prospective parents, he merges with the oval secretion of the mother-to-be and settles down in her womb. There he stays for a day in the form of a thick fluid and for the next five days he assumes the form of a bubble. After 18 more days, he assumes a more solid form. In a month time, 
he grows more solid in the course of months he develops the various parts of the physical body such as a head in the first month neck in in the third skin nails and hair in the fourth from the fifth month onwards the orifices like nostrils ears and mouth appear movement starts in the seventh in the eighth month intellect starts manifesting itself thus by the ninth month his body is fully formed and he takes birth then he grows and dies and thus passes on from womb to womb endlessly i have passed through all the gamut of experiences in this life i am illiterate old diseased and was in despair o lord may you afflict me i shall ever worship you henceforth o lord owing to the pulsations of the womb the human being emanates from it and at once loses his understanding and is deluded during his infancy he has no freedom not can he communicate his agony to others he loses sight of the very idea of winning his way to higher states of spiritual existence during his boyhood he forget himself in play and in youth he is totally preoccupied with sexual drives blind to all good and bad he is engulfed in a hectic pursuit of sensual pleasures like a beast in old age he will be obsessed with the fear of approaching death he is overtaken by illness like cough and breathing troubles finally he dies without gaining any mastery over his senses in this way a clear half of the whole span of man's life is spent away Id- idly in night and sleep major portions of what is left are was wasted in play during boyhood and worldly occupations in middle age in old age he is not free but is dependent on others thus the previous human life is wasted away human life proves worth while only through devotion to you and through association with the wise and the devout therefore may you bless me with faith in you and worthy association all my life then nandi sharma turned to the people who gathered there and said oh my brothers and sisters sri guru who is right in front of us is the supreme lord himself and not a common mortal as he looks those of you who wish to gain your welfare would do well to take refuge in him either through the practice of yoga or through listening to and meditating on his teaching the lord ever abides by those who are thus devoted to him for he can be one over only through faith the brahmin again turned to the guru exclaimed o thou supreme lord even the vedas have failed to describe thy glory indeed no one can enumerate thy glories which are infinite and are above the power of speech and mind to comprehend when he finally bowed down in reverence he found that even the little patch of dirty skin on his body had been cleared then at the instruction of the guru he came away to gangapur along with his wife lived there for long and recorded the divine acts of sri guru one day nandi sharma read out his verses to another poet named narakesari living in a nearby village the latter was an ardent devotee of lord shiva and he believed that the gods alone were worthy of adoration and worship it was his vow to compose a verse in practice of lord kaleshwara 
as the lord shiva was called in the local temple every day so he appreciated the poetry of nandi sharma's verses but objected to the glorification of a common mortal like sri narasimha saraswati later in the day during his daily worship of lord kaleshwara when he was meditating on the linga sri guru appeared in that form laughed and taunted him saying where is your lord kaleshwara so he quickly concluded his meditation and rushed for darshan of the lord at gangapur there as he began to sing the five verses he had composed in his praise sri guru said to him why do you set aside the supreme lord and glorify a common mortal amazed narakesari replied lord i have indeed mistaken you for a common mortal may you shower may you shower your mercy on me dispel my ignorance and grant me true wisdom my delusion is now dispelled and the merit of all my previous acts of austerity has borne fruit in this moment may you accept me as your disciple and bless me sri guru was pleased with the devotion of the visitor gave him a comment and said you continue to worship lord kaleshwara at your place for i myself am there in that form narakeshwari submitted my lord i am not to forego your immediate presence bless me with the good fortune of serving you without much difficulty i have gained you who are the divine wish fulfilling wish fulfilling cow or kamadenu i am the humblest of your disciples may you not be indifferent to my plea the merciful lord then accepted him as his disciple and bestowed on him the bless the bliss of self realization thus narakesari also served the master for long by singing his glory in his poems